Um, we're going to be using Payne's Gray Ultramarine, um, one of our medium-sized round brushes and a smaller-sized round brush. I have my paper towel here with me and some water. And of course, we've already used the masking tape to tape down our surface of things. So we're going to be using some wet on wet techniques, some wet on dry, and a little bit of splatter for this, all things we practiced in our technique panels last time. Um, we're going to be looking at using monochromatic. So we're just going to mix up a single batch that we're using for this whole painting. So you want to make sure you mix enough of the Payne's Gray and the Ultramarine because we want that cool winter look. So I like to get my palette started with some water in here. And then I'm going to pick up a lot of this Ultramarine and put it in the center. And if I wipe my brush off on the edge, it'll fall down into that middle well, down into here, okay? I don't want to lose any more of this than necessary, so sometimes I even gently squeeze my brush to get that last drip out of there before I rinse it. And then I only need to pick up just a touch of this Payne's Gray because it's pretty dark already. And I want to get almost a navy color in here, about like that. See, if I spread it around, I can see how dark that is which is really nice. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I wanna paint the stuff that's far away in my paper. Um, and we're gonna do it so that it kinda of comes out as this really cool edge. So I'm gonna rinse my brush, and I just want water in my brush right now. And I'm gonna come down off the edge of my paper. Think of it like mountains far away in the distance. So you're just gonna draw an edge. And you might have to look at your paper sideways to then go back and pull that water down off the edge of your hillside and my waters I left it a little dirty in hopes that you could kind of see what's going on so I have just drawn that line and I'm pulling water down away from that line a little bit I don't want it to continue too far so I'm just gonna go back and, and, and take that off and I'm gonna use my tiny brush I get it a little wet but then wipe it off pick up some of that paint that I created and I have to turn my head sideways and I'm gonna look just along the edge of the water that I put there and I'm gonna drag my paintbrush along the edge of that water. And you can see where I'm doing that. It's taking the paint and creating an edge that it draws down into the rest of that watery space. Okay. And I'm doing this because I want it really light and I want it to look a lot like rocks. I'm gonna pick up just a little more on here. I'm gonna go down sideways on the edge of my brush long way because it's gonna help it pick up and go down into that water some more. See how it pulls it down into there? And if the paper's drying too quickly, you're gonna start seeing more lines, just pick up water and go back in with water and tap that edge. When you tap that edge with that water, it's gonna run. Because we want these to look like mountains or rocks. So we wanna keep it a little darker in some spaces and a little lighter in others. Just like that. And remember how we talked about not wanting to smooth things out too much? That goes for this as well. You don't want to smooth things out a whole bunch. I might even go back in down in here with just a few taps here and there to add in some larger boulders in the mountain or some extra areas where there might be some valleys. Okay, And then that's all I'm going to do for that part that's really far away in my mountain range. I'm going to come a little bit closer. I want another series of mountains, but as they get closer to us, they also get a little bit darker. So I'm going to go in with the paint this time and just the straight paint. And I'm going to add a lot more in. And if you want to keep it a little pointier, you can even drag it up a little little points of your brush. Might be some trees really far off in the distance on those ridge lines. And if the bigger brush is too much for you, you can always switch to a smaller brush to get up on those tippy tops. I'm gonna go back in here. And you can almost think of it like fog, right? If there's a bunch of fog out in the mountains and the hills, it's gonna have that dusty, cloudy look to it when you go in. 
And I'm just going to keep using this and tap, tap, tapping it until all the paint is off of it. Again, that enhances the mood. What's in there a little bit. It makes it look like there's some natural lines. Got a little brush hair in there. We'll try and get that out so it doesn't mess with the paint too much. There we go. So I have my hills now that are a little bit closer to us. And now I want to do the one that's right closest to us. So I want to really load my brush and make sure it has lots of paint in it. I'm going to do that one here where we're going to have our closest foreground and tree growing. And if it's not dark enough, I might have to go mix up a little bit more of that blue and Payne's gray to make sure we have a real rich saturated color in here in the front. There we go. So I can drag this much further down since this is right in front of us. And again, I'm trying to keep it really organic. I'm kind of blopping and pulling to the side at the same time. So blopping is like a tapping, but more close to the paper, not as far away when we're working with it. I'm going to come all the way to the bottom with this one. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to flick the brush up a little bit for some of that little grass type look since it's a little closer to us. Not everywhere, mind you. I'm just giving it a hint of where there might be some. We don't always have to put it every place to trick the eye into thinking that it is every place. You can just go through and work on the sections that are there already, kind of like that. Now, I'm gonna let that dry for a few seconds. Um, I can even go back in and work some water into it. Like if I do a water drop here or a water drop over here where it's already drying a little bit, you see how it sort of pushes it out of the way and it starts giving it like a really neat organic feel. So sometimes I do that. I go in and add water drops to things. You don't want them to be too big. If they get bumped up against each other too much, then you lose this pretty little feathered edge, little fractal edge that it starts creating and you want to keep that. Now, you can also go back in and do it with paint. You don't have to just do it with water. If you go back in and you drop paint into things, it can react similarly where it will spread the paint out as well. So if you ever wanted something a little bit darker in an area, you can just go back in and drop a little bit of paint into it like that. So I'm um, looking in my background spaces. They're looking pretty good, I think. I am going to go back and add a little bit of white and darken this one up just a little along the ridge line. It's dried a little bit. I didn't have it too wet before. Like that. So I can either leave this dry for about an hour or I'm going to show you, I'm just going to take a blow dryer and gently dry it while it's All right. After you've dried it or you've let it dry, then we're going to come back in with our smaller brush. I'm going to put my larger one away. And we're going to add in a pine tree since it's sort of that wintry feeling in here, right? And I want to do it with my darkest colors. So I'm going to dry off my brush gently and go in here and pick up this color. I think I'm going to put it right over here. And I'm going to start by adding the, the top branches and then working my way down to the thicker trunk of that tree. Now it's a little on the light side still. So I gotta mix up some more paint so it's a little thicker. I wanna make sure that my pine tree is a little bit darker than everything else that's going on around it. Otherwise it's going to disappear back there, right? So I might have to pick up just a little bit more of that Payne's gray in my color to thicken it out, right? Then I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna start and I know I want my branches about here. And this process, you just wanna be really loose and kind of dot and drag a little bit to create that pine tree branch look, right? They don't have specifically super straight and narrow type branches. And then they get these little wispies on the end when you're working with them. So 
And sometimes you might even have a branch or two that sticks out. You're gonna work off of, if it helps you to have guiding line branches, you can do that. Just remember as you're working your way towards the top, they do get smaller until they pretty much, you can't even tell that they're a branch anymore. And I like to work on the side a little bit, back and forth, like this. And I'm just doing little dots and drags. And this takes a little bit of practice, the dots and drags thing on the paper, where sometimes you lift up and sometimes you don't. And I want some areas to stay darker than others. So I go back in and reload my brush every once in a while. And sometimes you get those little tips that are like the little three prong tips on there. Remember to pick up more paint once in a while. If it starts looking like it's the same as behind it in the mountains, you want it to stay darker than that. And you don't want to fill in too much of in between the branches. You still want to have some open space. Otherwise, they'll get lost and becomes one big blob of a triangle. And all of a sudden, your tree is gone. You want to keep the tree in there. Pretend that there's little spaces in between or leave little spaces in between when you're working on the tree. And remember to stay up on the point once in a while to thin out your branches and your little pine needles that are in there. before you might have to go in pick it up just a smidge so you don't lose the branch because as you work it back and forth you know you'll figure out where it needs to be a little darker and a little lighter I'm always trying to pull right I'm not trying to push with that at all and I can go back in now that I have the general outline of the tree in there can darken up the stump a little bit more. I even have a little bit of a root system that comes out from it. Again, we don't want everything to match. We want to make sure that some areas are darker and some are lighter. So I'm going to go in and drop a little bit of paint in here and there to work on that. Remember, it's still wet, so that paint will fade out a little bit as it works into those branches. And conversely, if you have an area that's too dark, remember that other technique, you can go back in, kind of dry off your brush, and you can go back in and pick up paint. You just gotta dry it, put it back on your paper towel when you're finished. So if you have some areas that you wanna lighten up, you can go back in and do that with the brush, I like that. So when you're finished, your tree should be a lot darker than your background areas. If it's changed too much, too dramatically, and you want to go back in, and you can add in some little wispy areas down here with your brushes, just ever so slightly and gently. Since this area is already dried, you don't want to overdo it. But if you go back into some of those areas you did before to reinforce the grass with that same... Color, but darker and denser. All right, like that you can. Okay. Huh. Now, once we finish this part, we're gonna let this dry, and then we're gonna do our um, splatter painting technique on top. So now we can go back in if we want to add some of that snow in there, and take just a little bit more blue than paints gray this time. Right, and we want to keep it thin, so I'm going to go with a little bit more of a flip to my brush. I don't want to get too big. I'm going to keep it kind of at a distance. There we go. And now we have our snow. 